Good morning and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are all in good health. We ask that all present respect the instructions given by our ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks when entering, leaving, or moving within the church. At the time of Holy Communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of Mass, we ask that you exit through the main doors at the back of the church. Our presider this morning is Bishop Hunt, and our gathering chant is number 632 in the celebrate and song, God our author and creator. celebrate the memorial of St. Elizabeth of Hungary, who is the patron saint of the Third Order of St. Francis and of Catholic Charities. That we may worthily, worthily enter into this celebration, we call to mind her uh, great uh, example of lived faith and charity, and we ask the Lord to help us in our daily lives to all also seek to be loving and kind in all that we do. We may worthily offer this Mass. We pause to call to mind those times that we have failed uh, in living out God's love in our lives. We ask for his forgiveness and the grace and strength to do better. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose gift St. Elizabeth of Hungary recognized and revered Christ in the poor, 
Grant, through her intercession, that we may serve with unfailing charity the needy and those afflicted, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. In my vision I, John, heard the voice of the Lord saying, And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have a name of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is on the point of death. For I have not found your works perfect in the sight of my God. Remember then what you have received and heard. Obey it and repent. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. Yet you you have still a few persons in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. If you conquer, you will be clothed like them in white robes, and I will not blot your name out of the book of life. I will confess your name before my Father and before his angels. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the origin of God's creation. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich. I have prospered, and I need nothing. You do not realize that you are wretched and pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. Therefore, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may be rich, and white robes to clothe you and to keep the shame of your nakedness from being seen, and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. I reprove and discipline those whom I love. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Listen, I am standing at the door, knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to you and eat with you and you with me. To the one who conquers, I will give a place with me on my throne just as I myself conquered and sat down with my Father on his throne. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The Word of the Lord. Psalm is number 15, O Lord, who may abide in your tent?
with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was short in stature. So Zacchaeus ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome Jesus. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our first reading today, we continue uh, on the reflections that uh, John the Evangelist, as a prophet, is offering uh, regarding the seven churches. Uh, I had a professor in the seminary that uh, said it was, uh, he, he, he looked at those seven churches and he would do a report card for each of the churches based on the comments that were there about them. Today we see John speaking to the church in Sardis, and he's saying, you've got a reputation for being alive, but you're dead, wake up. And he's talking to the church in Laodicea, and he's saying, you know, you're not hot or cold, so I'll spit you out. And then he gives that beautiful image, uh, one that I hope all of us have seen portrayed in that famous painting of Jesus being at the door knocking. I stand at the door knocking and he who will invite me in. And in that famous painting, if you notice in the door, there's no door knob. Jesus knocks at the door, but it needs to be opened from the inside. In the gospel passage today, we see Jesus knocking at the door of Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus gladly throws open the door. He's a man who, like those people of Sardis, was maybe more dead than alive in terms of his faith, but he's waking up. Like the people of Laodicea, at the very least, he was lukewarm in terms of his faith, but now he grows hot and fervent in his enthusiasm meeting the Christ and coming to hear his message. Today we celebrate the feast of someone who I don't think could ever have been described as lukewarm. We celebrate the feast of St. Elizabeth of Hungary. From a very young age, she was a very devout and passionate follower of the Lord. As a, as a wife, as a mother, uh, and as a member of the Third Order of St. Francis, she used the wealth of this world. She was the daughter of a king and she married uh, a count. She used the wealth of this world to help those most in need. She uh, herself tended to the sick and the poor. And um, the fact that she died at only 24 years of age is probably a sign of how enthusiastic she was and how much she wore herself out in the service of God and seeking to serve God in those most in need. As we continue in our Mass, we celebrate as we always do at Mass, what the Lord has done for us, how he poured himself out for us. And we thank him for that gift of his love and we ask him to help us uh, that we may be passionate and hot in our efforts day by day to serve him well. That we may always recognize his knocking at the door in our lives, inviting us to share in his love and to share that love with others. And that like Zacchaeus, we may enthusiastically throw open the doors of our heart to receive him today in the Eucharist, and to share his love with others throughout the day ahead. God bless you.
One of the ways that we serve the Lord and help others is through the prayers that we offer for their needs. So with confidence, let us offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. We begin by praying for our Pope, for all our religious and civil leaders, that they may be inspired by the example of St. Elizabeth of Hungary and other saints who had great power, that they too may seek to, to use their power for the good and for justice for all. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for ourselves and for all who have been given the gift of faith that we may throw open the doors of our hearts to God's presence and that we may seek day by day to serve him well and those around us. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, We pray for the poor and the sick and the suffering. We pray that they may find in God's followers people like St. Elizabeth of Hungary who reach out to help them and to share with them God's love. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, by the example of blessed Elizabeth of Hungary, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promised in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy.
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Elizabeth of Hungary, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should, should enter under my roof, roof but only, only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never per permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow toward the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by the ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The Body of Christ.
Our communion hymn is Eat This Bread, number 602 in the Catholic Book of Worship. <laughs> 